All right, so our last video, we focused on the first derivative, and today we're going to focus on, you've guessed it, the second derivative. So what should trigger in your brain to use the second derivative? Well, of course, they've got a nice outline here. Here are some key words. Concave up, concave down, concavity, points of inflection. And then the phrases like increasing at an increasing rate or decreasing at an increasing rate. So let's get those all started in our notebook. These all mean I should be looking at a second derivative. So again here, I just took some random exam questions that use the second derivative that I thought we should focus on. Um, so f is a, fun a function with a second derivative given. Um, the, what are the x-coordinates of the points of inflection? So the first thing I highlighted is the question here. Here's, whoops, here is my question. What is the point of inflection? So I'm going to basically scratch that and say I need to look at the second derivative. Okay, now what's convenient about this equation is that you didn't have to do any calculus. They gave you the second derivative. So you are literally just setting that derivative equal to zero. Now, one of the things we've been really bad at, and it's partly my fault, I perhaps haven't stressed it enough, is that on the free response, we have to show this step. Whether you're setting the first derivative equal to zero, the velocity equal to zero, the second derivative, let's get this in our notebook. We've got to make sure we're showing that because we are going to lose a point. Um, and that's just something we're going to have to work on over the next month here. So I'm setting this derivative equal to zero. Uh, so I've got x cubed, x minus 2, and x minus 5 squared equals 0. Okay, it's already factored, so I'm just teeing it up. So x cubed equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, x minus 5 squared equals 0. Okay, and then it looks a little sloppy. I'm trying to go a little fast here. Um, so at this point, take the cubed root of both sides. and you should get x equals 0. Solve here, I should get x equals 2. Square root both sides, I should get x equals, that cancels, move the 5 over, x equals 5. So I've got three points I need to consider. Now that doesn't make them all points of inflection because you do not have an answer until you make a sign chart. So I'm going to start with my 6 and I'm going to plug it in here. x cubed is a positive, or 6 cubed is positive, 6 minus 2 is positive, I don't care what I put in here because anytime I square it, it's going to be positive. Three positives make a positive. If I plug a three in, three cubed is a positive. Three minus two is a positive, and anything I square is a positive. So there's one catch. That is nothing. At five, f double prime did not change signs. Uh, let's try one. One cubed is positive. One minus two is negative, and anything I square is a positive. So positive times a negative is a negative times a positive makes a negative. Let's try negative 1. Negative 1 cubed means 3 negative 1s is a negative. Negative 1 minus 2 is a negative, and anybody I square is a positive, which gives me a positive. So now remember, this is talking about concavity. Concave up, um, that's negative. Concave down, concave up, concave up. And I was looking for a point of inflection, which is where f double prime changes signs. So I would say at 0 and at 2. Let's go see if that's a choice. Um, at 0 and 2 only is winner, winner, chicken dinner that I would go with there. All right, next question. They love these tabular questions, and they're so easy to fall for. Um, so they give me a table of f double prime. And they're saying, which of the following statements is true? Now, I want you to think first. When you see double prime, which word should trigger in your head? Concavity, points of inflection. These all talk about F double prime. Not mins, not increasing, not decreasing. These are all first derivative type questions. These are all second derivative type questions. So common sense should have crossed those off. I'm not even going to focus on those. I need to focus on the second derivative because that's what I know something about. Now, again, let's see. It changes concavity on the interval 1 to 3. So I'm only looking from here to here. Does this function change concavity? Well, can you ever tell if it's concave down or concave up? Here it's definitely concave down. Here it's definitely concave up. So I'm thinking that's true. Let's double check the next one. The graph of f has a point of inflection at x equals 2. Okay, before it I'm negative, after it I'm positive. So, hmm, could that be true? Is that true? Well, again, here's where the table is very sneaky. 
do you know exactly what happened before two? And a lot of people want to say yes because they think they know what one is, but one is not before two. 1.99999 is before two, which you know nothing about. You have no idea what's happening between one and two, so you can't actually say that you change from a negative to a positive. You have no idea what's happening after two at 2.001. You have no idea if you're positive or negative. So this cannot be true, and that's the one they're going to try to trick you with. Um, we'd have to go with choice D there. All right, if f double prime equals this function, then the graph has a point of inflection when x equals what? So again, point of inflection means I need the second derivative. Convenient again, they give me the second derivative. So all they're seeing is you can understand what you're looking for. So if I tee that up, I should get x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals 1. Now some of you are going to jump on that answer and pick E. Those are the fools. Don't do that. You can't say you have a point of inflection until you make a sign chart. Okay? So I think the moral of the story over the past two days here is what words mean increasing, what words mean concavity. Set your derivative equal to 0 and make a sign chart. You are not done until you have the sign chart. Um, so I'm going to plug a 2 in. So again, I'm just testing here, here, and here. So I'm going to say that's positive, positive, positive. If I plug in a half, 3 times a half is positive, a half plus 3 is positive, and this doesn't matter, that's always positive. So look, they're trying to trick you. Nothing happened there. Um, if I plug in a negative 1, let's see, that's negative, positive, positive, so that's definitely negative. If I plug in a negative 4, it's negative, negative, positive, which is positive. So I would say I have points of inflection at negative 3 and 0 only. Oh, I just love these graphs. The function g has the properties g of x is less than 0, g prime is greater, and g double prime is less than 0. Which of the following could be the graph of g? So let's just slow down and attack each one separately. So if I'm telling you the function is less than 0, I'm basically telling you its y values are less than zero, which means the y values are sitting under the x-axis. So who can you eliminate just off that one? Okay, my y values are negative. g prime. This talks about the slope. The slope is positive. So I'm going from left to right and saying, who has a positive slope? Negative, that's out. Positive, but then it went negative, that's out. This guy, totally positive slope. Let's see if it falls in the last criteria. G double prime, so now I'm talking concavity, is less than zero, so it has to look concave down, which choice E does, and I think we've solved our problem. But notice how I just took one piece at a time. All right, so now we've got an ugly problem, um, and it's not as pretty that they've already given you the derivative that you need. So it says the graph of g is concave down when? So again, I'm crossing these off and I'm saying I need the second derivative. Now, why am I saying this is uglier? Well, did they give you the second derivative? No. So you're going to have to take it. This is a great review problem. So when I go to take this derivative, I'm going to read it out loud first. It does say x times the quantity x minus 2 squared. So I know I need a product rule there. So I'm going to go first, derivative of the second, watch my chain. plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. Now, we've said this over and over and over. Anytime you do product or quotient, and it's going to happen, that's the Calc AB exam, those are big topics, make sure you pull out a GCF next. So now I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to pull out the x minus 2. Okay, so I'm taking this out. So here's my plus sign. Just on this side, if I take that out, I now have just a 2 and an x. I'm going to bring that plus sign down. I took out one of those, so I should have the quantity x minus 2. So when I clean that up, oops, I'm going to get g prime of x equals x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. Okay, now I'm not done because I needed the second derivative, so now I'm going to derive this, which again is a product rule. So going first times the derivative of the second plus the second 
times the derivative of the first, which again is 1. So no GCF in this case, so I'm just going to clean up what I have here. I've got 3x minus 6 plus 3x minus 2. So that's going to get me 6x minus 8. And I'm always setting that derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to say x equals 8 over 6, or divide by 2, 4 thirds. Now that doesn't mean that's the answer. That means you have to make a sign chart and see if you actually have a point of inflection. So 4 thirds is a little bigger than 1. That's 1 and 1 third. So I'm going to pick maybe 5 here and 0 here. And I'm plugging it into my derivative, which was 6x minus 8, my second derivative. So 6 times 5 is 30, minus 8 is positive. 0 times 6 is 0, minus 8 is negative. So I would say I do have a point of inflection at 4 thirds. So let's go back and see if that is an option. And that was not the question. It actually said concave down. Uh, so I would say I'm concave down from um, negative infinity to 4 thirds. which would lead us to choice B there. Okay, so for a second day in a row, big theme. You are setting either the first derivative or the second derivative equal to zero based on the words you see. Um, and let's just kind of recap here. First derivative, increasing, decreasing, max, min, um, extrema. Second derivative, Points of inflection, concave up, concave down, concavity. We do have to make sure we get these straightened out. And I think the other big thing you want to take away is that we have to show f prime equals zero and f double prime equals zero. And if you don't know what to do on a calc exam, try just setting the derivative equal to zero because that usually gets you a point.